How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be showing you how to achieve the best FPS possible in Halo Infinite. Alongside achieving the best FPS possible, we're also going to be aiming to reduce your input latency alongside maintaining competitive settings, cleaning up the image and allowing for a much more competitive, fast, snappy and responsive gameplay experience. Regardless of how good, bad, new or old your system is, this video has some great optimizations for all system types, so if you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it helps me out tremendously. And with that out of the way, let's get straight on into to the video. To kick things off, we're first of all going to apply some basic Windows optimizations. Start off by navigating down to the bottom left hand side, typing in game space mode, clicking on game mode settings. Ensure that the Windows game mode has been switched to the on position and then exit out. Following on from there, going to the bottom left once again, this time typing in GPU space settings, then clicking on graphics settings. Inside of this tab, if you do have the option available to you for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, make sure that you turn this on for further latency improvements. For those of you that are using a Chromium based browser such as Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, you want to make sure that you apply this optimization. Once inside of the browser, take yourself to the top right hand side to the three dots. Navigate down to settings. On the left hand side, go down to advanced, system, and you want to make sure that continue running background apps when Chrome is closed is switched off. This setting is on by default, meaning that every single time you close Chrome, all of your extensions and background apps within Chrome are still running as if you basically haven't even closed out of the browser. Having this turned off means that every single time you press exit out on Chrome, it's closed completely. This is the only external optimization or tool I'm going to recommend that you try, as this has some serious improvements for lowering input latency. This is an app in which I recommend in practically every single one of my videos because it's fantastic. Not only will this help you reduce your input latency by lowering the system's timer resolution, but it also has a secondary purpose of of cleaning out the background standby list on Windows, helping free up excess RAM and reduce stuttering. Once you've been brought onto the web page, scroll down to the official download here section. Once the app is downloaded, select open, click on the three dots, select your desktop, okay, extract. With the application extracted, you'll then be met with a folder on your desktop, open up inside of the intelligent standby list cleaner.exe. Make sure that the first box is set to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your system memory, which you can find in the top left. For me, I have 32,000, so half of that's going to be 16,000. On the right hand side, change your wanted timer resolution to 0.50. Use your delete key to remove the extra values. Ensure that enable custom timer resolution has been selected. Set your ISLC polling rate to 500 for high end systems, and for medium end to low end systems, go with 1000. My standby list is currently using 10 gigabytes of my memory. The moment we click on purge standby list and start and is now successfully running in the background, clearing this out automatically as we play. This now moves us on to GPU specific optimizations. These first of all start off with making sure that you are up to date on your GPU drivers. This is very simple and easy to do. You first of all want to find the make and model of your GPU. For this take yourself down to your taskbar by right clicking on your taskbar and opening up task manager. Windows 11 users simply press control, alt and delete on your keyboard, open up task manager with inside of that menu. Inside of task manager go to performance, inside of here scroll all the way down the bottom left click on your GPU. In the top right hand side, you should then be able to see the make and model of your GPU. Take yourself into the description down below and either click on the AMD Radeon driver download link or the Nvidia GeForce driver link. Follow the on-screen prompts and download the latest driver. This step is incredibly important, especially for those of you running on an AMD Radeon GPU, as whilst I'm editing, Radeon have just released a brand new driver, fixing the performance issues in which you may be experiencing, and this driver will be available to download in the description down below and on AMD's website. For those of you out there that do experience quite a lot of stuttering with inside of most games or performance issues over time, it is recommended to check out the video on screen now, which I recently just released to the channel, which goes through how to properly clean old drivers from your system, install new ones, and this can have performance improvements, can help fix stuttering with inside of games, and any blue screen issues you may be experiencing. When you are on the latest GPU drivers, for some quick performance optimizations for them, right click on your desktop, either open up inside of the Nvidia control panel or the AMD Radeon panel. For Nvidia users, take yourself to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview, select the use advanced 3D image settings menu in the middle, select apply. Then go to manage 3D settings in the top left. We first of all want to start off with turning off image sharpening, starting off with low latency mode. Assuming that Halo Infinite currently does not have support for Nvidia Reflex, I would recommend switching low latency mode to on. Maximum frame rate is going to be switched off. Monitor technology is going to be set to fixed refresh. OpenGL rendering GPU, set this to your GPU. Power management mode needs to be set to prefer maximum performance, preferred refresh rate, highest available. Shader cache size, we're actually going to be leaving at driver default for now. Texture filtering quality needs to be changed to high performance. And with those settings set up and out of the way, select apply. Before we boot into the game, we can apply one quick optimization by right clicking on the game inside of Steam, navigating to properties, local files, browse. Inside of here, we can navigate down to the haloinfinite.exe, right click, select properties, compatibility, ensure that this game has been selected to run as administrator, 
Go to change high DPI, override the high DPI at the bottom, select OK, apply and OK. If you notice at any point that your performance in the game has gone down over time, or if you're running into performance issues, you can actually try clearing the cache of the game, which is very simple and easy to do. Navigate inside of the disk underscore cache section, go to game CSM cache. The quickest way of doing this, simply click on the top file, select control and A on your keyboard to highlight all, right click, select delete. For one last Steam optimization, right click on the game once again, this time navigate down to properties. Inside of here, go to DLC and make sure that you uncheck to uninstall the high resolution texture pack, which is defaultly on for everyone, regardless of how good or bad your system is. To uninstall this, simply select this, then update the game. Next time you boot, you should have much better performance and lower VRAM usage. With that then done, take yourself into Steam or the Xbox app and boot into Halo. Once we've booted into the game, before going into our in-game settings and dialing them in, I'd actually recommend booting into a quick custom match just by yourself so you can get a feel for the in-game settings live within a match that we can change to see if you prefer them or if you dislike them. Don't take too much of a notice of my in-game FPS currently as I'm recording with OBS which is very unoptimized as I'm using display capture, but that's besides the point. Let's jump into the in-game settings. Press escape, take yourself into the settings menu. Take yourself over to the video tab. Field of view, once again, this is personal preference. I personally prefer a field of view 110 degrees and that's what I'll be playing with. Make sure your display adapter has been set to your graphics card and that your display monitor is set to your main monitor. Select borderless full screen if you want a full screen image. Resolution scale is an option that is very good for achieving better FPS and we'll be coming back to this at the end of the video. First of all, start off with minimum frame rate. This must be set to off. If you have this set to any number of FPS with inside of here, you're gonna be getting horrible dynamic resolution scaling every single time you move your mouse where you'll notice the assets in the distance are quite blurry. To make sure this doesn't come on, make sure that you do have minimum frame rate all the way up at the top at off. For maximum frame rate, I would personally recommend going all the way up to the top and setting this to unlocked. Alternatively, if you do want to cap your FPS, I would recommend capping it at your monitor's refresh rate for the best experience possible to not put excess load on your GPU, keeping it cooler, quieter and running better for longer. Alternatively, if you are wanting to set up your game for the best performance possible and you don't want the best visuals or the sharpest visuals, setting your minimum frame rate to either 90, 120 or 180, the game will use its dynamic resolution scaling automatically to compensate for when your FPS will dip to try and get the game to stay as close to that target frame rate as possible. Again, a lot of you may not like this and you could experience more stutter having this setting turned on, but if you are looking for the best FPS possible, do also try this as you could find the results in which you're looking for. So either try this at 120 or turn this off altogether. Make sure the V-Sync is turned off. Limit inactive frame rate, you can turn this on. This is quite a good setting, but I personally don't trust this just yet. So I don't want anything interfering with my frames, so I'm keeping this off. Quality presets going to be set to custom. Anti-aliasing I'd recommend having set to low. Texture filtering, you may want to set this up to high, but for the best performance possible, go with low. Ambient occlusion is going to be set to low. Texture quality, if you want the best frames per second possible and the lowest level of input latency, go with low. Otherwise you can go with high, but this will come at a massive VRAM cost. So make sure that you don't go above the ideal VRAM. Geometry quality is also going to be set to low for the best competitive advantage. We're going to be switching off reflections for a competitive advantage. Depth of field, leave this setting alone, don't touch this as we set this up earlier in the config. Shadow quality is going to be set to low. Lighting quality is going to be set to low. Some of you may want this on high. Volumetric fog quality is going to be switched off. Cloud quality low. Dynamic wind off. Ground cover quality, you may want this switched up to high if you don't like the way the game looks and prefer visual fidelity, but for the best performance, go with low. Effects quality, low. Decal quality, low. Animation quality is going to be set to auto by default, and that's what I'd recommend keeping it at. Terrain quality may also want to be set to high for those of you that want a better looking game, but for the best FPS possible, go with low. Simulation quality, once again, match this to the setting of terrain quality we just set. Flocking quality is going to be switched off, and this now leads us to async compute. This really is a per system setting, and I'd recommend trying out both. If you find yourself experiencing a lot of stutter with having async compute turned off, definitely come with inside of here and enable async compute. For me personally, on my 5900X and RTX 3080 system, I've experienced quite infrequent stuttering and enabling async compute has fixed that entirely. For sensory settings, I would personally recommend turning pretty much all of these off. You may want to keep full screen effects on about 20% alongside exposure, but I would turn blur and screen shake off entirely. Speed lines I would also turn off unless you want them on. They can be quite a good visual cue, and sharpening is going to be personal preference. Most of you watching may want to set this to about 15% or off. The game is also suffering from a very poorly optimized UI. A few optimizations we can apply for this is to navigate inside of our settings, UI. First of all, disabling tips and tutorials. 
also disabling text chat if you don't need this. Proceeding to scroll down, I'd recommend turning on the FPS counter and network statistics. Proceed to scroll down even further, here we have the option for chromatic aberration, make sure to turn this off for much clearer visuals, bloom and parallax should also be disabled. You can also adjust the position of your gun on your screen by navigating right down to the bottom of this menu where you can then adjust the offset in real time to change exactly where you want your gun to appear. And you can do this on a per gun basis. The weapon offset is completely personal preference and will not have an effect on performance but it's just a useful setting to have. This time heading over to the accessibility settings, proceeding to scroll down, ensuring that subtitle visibility has been turned to the off position, you should now notice that your UI is a lot clearer and you should see a relatively decent FPS boost. Once we're done with inside of there, take yourself back inside of the game. Take a look at your FPS on the top right hand side, have a play around, run around the map and see what your frames are like. If you're noticing that the frame rate is quite steady and you are relatively happy with your in-game settings, that's fantastic. For those of you that are wanting a further performance increase, take yourself to the escape menu, select settings, video, go down to resolution scale. We're going to start off by taking this down 10% every single time, so go down to 90%, go back with the start of the game and take a look at your frame rate and how the game looks. When you are lowering your in-game resolution, you may also want to navigate down to the bottom and up the sharpening scale with inside of here to compensate for this to get a good balance of visual fidelity. Again, if you're not happy with 90%, go down to 80 and just continue to go down lower and lower until you find a fine balance of what you are happy with both visually and FPS. For a quick bonus segment of this video, we're going to be going over a few BIOS settings in which you should research into to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible on all of the latest AAA high demanding games. You first want to make sure that you have your RAM installed correctly to your system and that you are running your RAM in dual channel mode. RAM can't be installed into any slots available on your motherboard, they need to be installed correctly and you never want to be running an odd amount of RAM sticks. Alongside this, make sure that you are running your RAM XMP or DOCP memory profile. You could have the most expensive RAM kit and the best custom PC in the world but if you haven't told the BIOS to use these memory profile settings, they are going to be using the default Windows settings. For CPU, you may also want to look into applying a CPU all-core overclock as this will enhance the multi-core performance of your CPU, allowing for much more consistent performance, which games prefer. Alongside that, if you do have a GPU which is capable of running a resizable bar, make sure that you enable this in the BIOS as well for a further FPS improvement. Setting up the BIOS can be a scary step and that's why I want you to go ahead and research those settings because it's one of the most, if not the most important step to optimizing your PC and making sure that you are getting the performance in which you have paid for. And that concludes the Halo Infinite Ultimate FPS Optimization Guide. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please do remember to leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm. And if you are serious about game optimizations and want to go more in depth or are looking for other games to optimize, check out the videos on screen now.